Hi, my name is David Friend. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wasabi, the cloud storage company. And I want to take this opportunity to give you a few of my own personal predictions about what's in store for the cloud industry in 2021. First, I think the cloud's going to become a much richer, more varied environment. I don't think it's going to be a world where Microsoft, Google, and Amazon slice the world up into three pieces. I think what we're going to see is a proliferation of vendors uh, like Wasabi, who do one part of the cloud really, really well, and all of those vendors are going to be able to function together in a much more heterogeneous environment. So that brings me to my second prediction. And my second prediction is MSPs, bars, and CSPs, cloud service providers, are not going to go away. It was just uh, a few years ago, really, with the rise of Amazon, that a lot of the industry pundits were predicting the demise of the, of the channel uh, because, you know, Amazon has built their entire business model on disintermediating the channel. But I think what we're seeing today is the channel is flourishing and the channel is flourishing because somebody needs to understand how to take all of these different pieces, these different specialty vendors like Wasabi, put them together and, um, and make them all work. And my third prediction is that data is being seen now as a competitive weapon and the amount of data that we're storing and the length of time that we're storing that data for is really starting to stretch out. So as the cost of storage of data storage goes down and as the potential uses for data goes up, we're going to see more and more data being stored for longer and longer periods of time get saved. And that brings me to my final point, which is a little unrelated to the IT industry, but, but you'll see maybe not so much. It's about surveillance. Uh, there's almost 800 million surveillance cameras in operation around the world today. They probably generate more data than any other single application on the face of the earth. Uh, estimates are that there's about 200,000 petabytes of storage associated with those 800 million surveillance cameras. Right now, almost all of that 200,000 petabytes is on-prem storage. And my prediction is now with the cost of cloud storage coming in lower for the first time than the cost of on-prem storage, we're going to start to see a migration of surveillance from on-prem to the cloud. So it's going to be a great year for Wasabi. It's certainly going to be a great year for the cloud in general. And I'll be back at the end of 21 to tell you about what I'm thinking about for 2022. Have a great year, everybody. Changes in the workplace are being driven by a lot of things. And I think one of them is technology. Thinking about the workplace in a different way will be really key to ensuring that innovation continues to help businesses thrive and progress forwards. It's about people, it's about spaces, it's about technology. It's going to be more of a hub and spoke approach where people may work in their offices sort of in one place and join together in a main office to get together for bigger, more collaborative events. Workplace automation will replace redundant and repetitive tasks. So it's actually going to free people from stuff they shouldn't really have to do anymore. If you look at robotic process automation, uh, guided artificial intelligence, cognitive systems, etc., they're not going to replace people, they're going to assist people. Big data and business intelligence and analytics are going to be important trends to focus on in 2021. Everything's moving to the cloud. More and more companies are born in the cloud. So the cloud is going to play a key role when you think about public cloud and private cloud and the ability to combine the two based on the needs of your applications and the needs of your data will be crucial. We see increased speed, security, and accessibility to information being paramount. 5G is becoming more mainstream. We're highly reliant on our devices and you can't afford now to be disconnected. Well, the real future of the workspace is the intelligent connected workplace, which gives people easy access to data, easy access to be able to analyze data, and has the resiliency and flexibility to deal with changing marketplaces, changing environments, and even changing economic environments. I think it'll also be a really big year for IT security, actually being a time of a real increase in cyber viruses as well as hackers have taken advantage of uh, the lower levels of security with a lot of home-based work. With everything being in the cloud, and everything being about data and applications, the way we secure that data will be absolutely crucial. Konica Minolta has a unique perspective for helping companies through these digital transformations. Hello, my name is Perfarin Bislini. 
I am a pre-sales consultant and customer success engineer at Login VSI. And my main focus is to help customers and partners to get the most value out of our solutions. Um, our predictions for 2021 start off with the rate of change that is increasing uh, dramatically, we would say. So COVID has triggered a lot of change for companies, big, small. You know, everyone has come to realize that, um, you know, we, we can work from anywhere. Even the most critical of managers, you know, have adopted the new way of working. Uh, and we believe that that change will continue to um, increase. So <clears throat> if you look at the cloud offerings, there will be two types. Um, the companies that move uh, basically their complete infrastructure into the cloud and the one that say connected with edge devices while moving their back-end services like email or Active Directory or you know uh, SaaS offerings into uh, into cloud. Um, one big focus thing is automation for a lot of companies uh, and that will become more and more in 2021. Um, if you're the traditional admin that clicks, or clicks his way around uh, in consoles, configuring things, you know, automation uh, has quite the impact now and, and uh, the main focus for partners, integrators uh, and software companies. So, uh, yeah, stay on top of your game um, and try to learn some coding skills. The fourth um, prediction for 2021 is that you know, companies will lose control over their IT and that specifically their change management. So while we're because we're in this DevOps approach and a lot of companies have uh, uh, SaaS offerings, a lot of vendors move to SaaS off offerings, they will be releasing uh, changes <clears throat> when they please basically. So continuous delivery is a big thing for, for software companies. Um, and as, as an organization, you will have to deal with change that can happen anytime. And you will need, they will need to find a, a way to um, you know, keep track of quality of, of SaaS offerings. Fifth thing is the, I'm, I'm still waiting for a big cloud uh, outage, basically. Um, com I see a lot of companies that don't have an exit strategy or a backup plan for cloud. Um, maybe 2021 is when a big cloud provider fails and uh, you know we come to realize that we do need some backup plan. <clears throat> Overall we see that you know the end user is getting more and more to say in how a uh, workspace is, is, is designed and defined uh, and that will continue into 2021. So those were our predictions for 2021. Stay safe and talk to you later. Hi everybody, I'm Tejas Gadia, a developer evangelist here at Zoho, and I'm here to tell you my top predictions for developers in 2021. We've seen an exponential growth in the application development and delivery market over the past decade, and that trend is for sure going to continue. The speed of application development will further increase by leveraging technologies like low-code, serverless, and AI. So here are a few of my predictions for 2021. First, shifting business landscapes will further increase low-code adoption. Low-code has already been on the rise for the past couple of years, but given the new wave of distributed workforces in light of COVID-19, organizations will need to adapt to the increased demand for process digitization. Democratizing application development by empowering business users will reduce the backlog for central IT teams while still giving them the necessary governance controls for oversight. However, given the rise in the market demand, there have been many new vendors in the space, and organizations need to evaluate them thoroughly before making a choice. Applications built on low-code platforms are generally not easily portable, making vendor lock-in a major concern. Organizations need to trust the vendor's long-term business model, execution history, and future strategy to ensure a successful symbiotic relationship. Second, serverless development will continue to grow at a rapid pace and be a key tool for developers that provides flexibility and scalability. Traditionally, serverless has always been associated with functions as a service. However, the scope will broaden in the future to include backend as a service, functionality that will reduce the amount of DevOps required. Components like data and file stores, identity management, auto ML, and more will see an increase in serverless applications. Third, AI will play an essential role in augmenting DevOps by monitoring and improving conventional IT operations, like optimizing unit testing, release management, ticket management, and so much more. 
The progression to zero touch automation will continue, freeing up resources to focus on building core business application logic rather than just test cases. Last but not least, data privacy will play a larger role for developers. Historically, developers have primarily focused on data security as a part of their application development, but with the rise of privacy awareness and regulations around the world, developers will have to pay special attention to how their users' data is controlled and shared. For example, many packages and SDKs that developers take advantage of will have to be thoroughly vetted to ensure that data is not being shared with any third parties. That's all from me. Those are my predictions. Hope you have a great year. Thank you. Hi, VM Blog. My name is Greg Apirian, VP of Customer Experience here at Corbett. I'm joined by my colleague, George. I'll let George introduce himself. Hi, everyone. George Pop, Chief Technology Officer, also here at Corbett. So George and I would both like to share a trend that we see for 2021 and uh, I will go first here. So um, Corbett is a what we call a workplace experience platform. So the worlds of digital communications and uh, enabling the digital workplace has sort of come together and our platforms help the enterprise reach and engage with their uh, employees or, or audiences that might extend to guests, students, whoever's using the type of platform. Um, so the trend I'd like to talk about today is one you're probably familiar with, targeting, but targeting for internal communications is pretty new. Most communicators or organizations are not doing this just yet. They might be scratching the surface of it with email and distribution lists, but the opportunity with targeting is to deliver relevant content. So you have to assume a company that's of you know thousands of people in size, tens of thousands, um, maybe someone like Amazon, millions of employees, that there's a great uh, diverse uh, gap between what people want and need in terms of communications and access to tools and data and information to do their job, uh, as well as what they're interested in. Um, so targeting can enable that. And, and end of day, all communicators are looking for positive engagement and engagement can only really be driven by relevance. So when you take a look at targeting, targeting is not as much the trend. The trend is the data that you will use for targeting. So ask yourself, do you have an HR system? Do you have data on all employees beyond just their first name, their last name, and their employee ID, and perhaps their email? Does every employee have an email? Does every employee have access to single sign-on or other methods of authentication? Um, and in all of that, is your data clean? So are there attributes associated to each employee so you know their role, their department, their tenure, their location, and any other way you want to slice and dice this? The trend is really how companies, whether that's through IT, HR, communications, whoever owns that HR system, is keeping that data clean and maintained so the solutions that you're using, like Corbett, to deliver this workplace experience can be uh, fully realized through that data. Yeah, exactly right, Greg. And, and today I wanna to talk about enabling the digital workplace through the data that Greg was talking about, through these enterprise, sometimes real-time mission critical uh, data sets. Uh, so employees, in order to really have the data and the power of the data, they need access to systems across the enterprise. They need access to CRM data, they need access to ERP, warehouse management, supply chain, and a lot of times data lakes, data warehouses of proprietary data sources. Um, so, and this data needs to also, of course, be contextualized to their job role. So if I'm a contact center agent, I need calls in queue and maybe skill sets, but if I'm a supply chain worker, I need access to inventory management systems. Uh, but regardless of the job role, all employees need access to what Greg was talking about before, HR data. I need access to my paycheck and my benefits and my PTO calendaring, uh, perhaps my talent management system, my learning management system. So we think it's a real key advantage for any company that has a platform that can unify this data together and use this data for two purposes. One is for performance management. Again, we're talking about the contact center supply chain person having that business critical data, but also really to engage and empower the employee with career growth and other types of messages that are data driven as well. So we feel like companies that have this will definitely get an advantage. 
Um, and again, I would not be a technology guy unless I talked about security a little bit. So the nature of, of this data, you know, sometimes it's innocuous, sometimes it's transient. A call in queue uh, for the last 60 seconds is not that important, it's not that sensitive, but name, address, paycheck information is very important. So you need to make sure that you're surfacing this data across the enterprise, you're able to talk to employees, give them this data, but it has to be done in a secure fashion. That's extremely important. Um, the other key trend that, that I've noticed is is really around automation. And just real quick, what we know communicators are really overworked. They, they've got a small department that has to communicate to thousands of employees. So really having automation around content is gonna be a key to future success. Uh, we can use limited machine learning and some limited AI to use some data mining algorithms. Much like the Amazon shopping cart works where, hey, people that have bought this item have bought other items, we can do the same thing with internal employee communications content, and we can learn, hey, employees that have engaged with this content have also gone on to engage with other content. This way we can automatically rotate it into the publishing schedule and uh, kind of give it uh, 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 the ability to uh, be hands-free, set it and forget it, if you will. And again, we feel like companies that have this technology will have a leg up on the competition.